Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video. Today I am doing some more Distress Ink Reinker watercoloring. I just cannot help myself. I love this technique so, so much. I keep going back to it. And today we're getting a little bit of a different look by stamping with a background stamp and then watercolor painting on top. For my stamping, I'm putting my hot press, yes, hot press, not cold, just kind of felt like switching it up today. I'm putting my hot press watercolor paper on a sticky mat inside my Misty stamping platform and just so it holds it in the center. And then I'm stamping the mosaic background stamp from Simon Says Stamp in Versamark ink. This is a really interesting background stamp. It's been out for a while, but the reason I really love it is that it almost looks like, like reptile skin, but also mosaic. It's such an interesting pattern. So I've stamped that in Versamark ink and I'm peeling back my sticky mat so it releases the paper without bending the paper. I'm going to put that plastic cover back on my sticky mat and I'll uh, store it off to the side of my works, workspace here. And then I'm going to apply some gilded embossing powder to my background. So this is a gold embossing powder from Brutus Monroe very fine detail that's perfect for stamps like this. And then I'll hit it with my heat tool until all of that powder is melted. It's a little bit hard to see on camera here since those lines are so dainty, but they do emboss really, really well. And you'll see that here after I finish my painting. I've taped my project to a board here, and I'm going to put my three colors of Distress Ink reinkers out on my palette here. This is just a piece of plastic that I use as my palette. It's This one happens to be from Art Impressions. And I'm using Squeezed Lemonade, Worn Lipstick, and Salty Ocean. Kind of an interesting combination for me today. I wanted to, to do a basic uh, yellow, red, blue, but I wanted to change up which yellow, red, and blue that I use. So I have never used these three together. So I, at this point in the, in my process, I didn't know how well they would combine, but they turn out beautiful in the end. I sprayed my entire watercolor project with water and now I've got a wet paintbrush and I'm just going to start applying all of that paint just in different sections. I want to make sure I have yellow in a couple different areas. I want to make sure that I have that worn lipstick shade in a couple different areas. And I'm just applying those colors right down onto my project. Now, the first thing I noticed when I was painting over top of a stamped background that's embossed versus just painting directly onto plain watercolor paper is that the lines of that embossing powder that's been melted create little wells. And so the color and the paint sort of collects inside each individual shape and um, it sort of prevents the colors from moving around. So I'm not getting as much kind of that tie dye look as I have in the past. The colors aren't really moving much. So I sprayed it with some more water, trying to encourage those colors to move. They just weren't moving. So I decided I would have to coax it along with my paintbrush here in a few different areas, because for the most part, the colors just weren't really moving around and mixing with each other. They were just collecting and making a gray spot. So it wasn't looking as good as I'd hoped. So I brought in my brush, tapped it into the color and brought it over to my project. I'm really trying to force those colors to blend a little bit. And in the areas where it turned really gray, I want to make sure to add more color on top so that it brightens it up. After I had the colors basically where I wanted them, I took my heat tool, which is a dual heat tool. It has a low and high setting and I kept it on the low setting and I moved it around quite a bit. I didn't want to stay in one area too long because I didn't want to run the risk of melting that embossing powder a second time, which if you've ever and heat embossed on watercolor paper. You may have accidentally done this. I have done it in the past myself where you just heat it a little too much and that embossing powder just sort of soaks into the paper and you've lost all of your heat embossing. So just be careful when you're heat embossing on watercolor paper. 
But as you notice, as I dry this, those individual shapes in the mosaic stamp sort of collect each color and it almost has one color for each section. It's such an interesting look. It almost looks pixelated and I really fell in love with this look. I'm going to have to revisit this stamp over and over again because I really loved how that turned out. I checked with my hand to make sure everything was dry and then I removed the tape and I moved on with my project. So this was a five by seven piece of watercolor paper. So I had plenty of space to work with. I decided to cut it down using some five by seven layers dies or a seven layers dies from waffle flower. And I wanted to preserve as much of that background as possible, but I was limited to the six inch height of the background stamp. So this is going to be a little bit smaller than a five by seven card, and it's going to allow for a very generous border around my watercolor panel. Ran that through my die cutting machine. And then for the rest of the card, I'm going to be using this stamp set from CZ Design. Um, I think this is just called the Get Well stamp set. I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I'll have it linked down below in the video description. I'm stamping the really large Feel Better Soon onto some Simus' stamp vellum. I prepped the vellum with an anti-static powder tool, and then I'm stamping that grating in Versamark ink. I'm going to stamp that down and walk my fingertips over the top and make sure I have a really good impression down onto that vellum. I then applied some of that same gold embossing powder, which is gilded from Brutus Monroe and I heat set that with my heat tool. And I love watching metallic embossing powders melt. You can really see how the color changes on top of this vellum with that really bold, thick font from the stamp. Love how that looks. And the gold just looks beautiful. So I wanted to double up on my vellum because one layer of vellum, it showed the color underneath of the watercolor painting, but it was almost too much and it was too busy. So I decided to double up on the vellum. And one way you can do that is by applying adhesive on the entire back of one piece of vellum and then stick it to another piece of vellum and it just doubles them up. And because you've applied adhesive over the entire surface, you can't see any adhesive at all. So I used my Xyron, uh, well, gosh, this isn't the creative sticker. This is the Creative Station Light, I believe. I'll have a link down below. I think it's still sold at Amazon and a few different places, but I'll link it down below. It's my favorite way to apply adhesive on the back of vellum. And then I stuck those two pieces of vellum together. And then I'm going to use the coordinating die that goes with this particular image from the stamp set. And I positioned that directly over the top of my stamped grating. And then I ran that through my die cutting machine. For a secondary grating, I'm using the reverse Get Well sentiment strips from Simus's stamp. And I just wanted to cut out this sort of longer line of text that I'll be adhering below the Feel Better Soon. As far as adhering the Feel Better Soon goes, I put little dots of Gina K Connect to glue behind the embossing and then put that directly on my card front. By the way, I did uh, adhere my watercolor panel to a five by seven white card base using some foam adhesive. For those secondary greetings, I have little thin strips of foam behind them. And then I use some tweezers just to kind of stagger them right below. So in total, this card says, feel better soon, hoping you feel back to your old self soon. I thought those greetings worked really, really well together. And that's my card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Everything I've used today is listed down below in the video description if you want to click over and do a little bit of shopping. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are brand new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up so it tells YouTube that you like my videos and you'll see them again. It really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back on Friday with day one of the holiday card series for 2022. It's going to be a live version, so please join me at 11 a.m. Mountain Time on Friday for a day one of the holiday card series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.